what's going on guys welcome back into the channel in today's video we're going to be doing a viewer requested video we're going to be talking about how to generate the best matchups and how to generate therefore mismatches with your cornerbacks within madden i want to dive into that today and talk a little bit about how you can get advantages here how you can get the best matchups for your defense and create positive outcomes for your team Quickly, before we jump into the video, I do have to mention that my merchandise store is now available with the Better to Be Lucky Than Good design, as well as my YouTube logo, so that I hope you guys will check that out. The link is down in the description. We've got everything that you could possibly want, from t-shirts to hoodies to other types of merchandise like gym bags, stickers, magnets, all that type of stuff. So please go ahead and check that out, as well as my Patreon now being up and running. It's only a dollar a month, so if you want to support the channel financially to help us grow, you can certainly do that. Aside from that, though, if you want to contribute to this channel growing and the success that you guys have provided for this channel, all you need to do is leave a like on this video, comment, and subscribe. All of that definitely helps to drive the channel and push these videos out. And if you get to the end of this video and you did not like it, certainly turn that like into a dislike. So go ahead and do that now. And without further ado, we'll jump into our cornerback mismatches. The first thing that is very important for people to know about cornerbacks within Madden is that for some time now, I can't say exactly how many years, but it's been for quite a while, your cornerbacks are generally going to be matched up opposite of the way you would think. So typically speaking, if we go into my depth chart, we would think that my top corner is either going to be designated to a specific side of the field, or they are going to be covering the top wide receiver. So if we go to cornerback here, for example, you would think that Darius Slay being in the number one spot is what you would want. And that means that he's going to either be covering their number one receiver or if it's the opposite logic he'll just be locking down a certain side of the field however that's just simply not the case that's not the way that it works within madden madden 23 specifically as well as others the way that it actually works is that your number one corner will be matched up on their number two wide receiver and your number two corner will be matched up on their number one wide receiver so this is where oftentimes people will get into a disadvantage and here's one quick example in practice mode as we saw on our depth chart, we had Darius Slay as the number one cornerback, and we had Bradbury as the number two. On our depth chart, of course, with the Eagles, A.J. Brown is actually the number one wide receiver. However, we can see here that we are covering opposites. So Bradbury is on A.J. Brown over there on the left side of the field. And on the right side of the field, we have Darius Slay matching up against Devontae Smith. As our next example here to get these players moving around a little bit, we switched up the formations. You'll now see the defense is in man coverage as we run this play. And again, typically speaking, like I said, you would want your number one slot on the depth chart to be covering their number one slot on the depth chart. So we know now that your number one corner is generally going to be matched up against their number two wide receiver. This isn't going to be perfect for every single case, but you can also expect that your depth corners, your two and your three, are sometimes going to be matched up against the number one on the opposite team. This is a product of the playbooks and the way some of these things work and the way that the depth charts are coded, but now we know that we need to flip our corners if we at least want to get the best matchup possible. So with that in mind, heading back to our depth chart, let's take a look at the corner corners with a new framed mind. We can now say that we're going to automatically put our best corner in the number two spot if we want to try to eliminate a top wide receiver on the other team. Generally speaking, that is going to be your best case scenario if there is a one tier player like AJ Brown that you want to make sure you have your best guy covering as often as possible. There are, however, other ways that you can game the system. There are other ways you can gain advantages, and that would be, again, by looking looking at the depth chart of the other team. So you're going to want to look at their wide receiver depth chart, and you're going to want to look at their slot wide receiver depth chart. So here's a great example where Devontae Smith is actually in the slot for this team. And that's again why you see some of the certain matchups that you will see on the field. So Devontae Smith is listed as the number two receiver. So you would expect him to generally be out wide, but the slot wide receiver depth chart is going to override that. And that is going to result in AJ Brown and Quez Watkins being the outside wide receivers when there is a slot and Devontae Smith taking that slot wide receiver spot. Knowing this fact, what I may then do is I may consider putting James Bradbury the fourth in as my slot corner so that my faster corners can match up on the outside. 
So Darius Slay being 92 speed, Avante Maddox being 92 speed may be better suited to playing on the outside to match that speed so that I'm not getting burnt over the top. Yeah, the coverage skills are a bit different. We can tell, of course, that Bradbury has better play rec coverage skills, but it may be better served in the slot where we know he's not going to get ran by necessarily because we know that at wide receiver in practice mode, again, what we're referring to, we know that we're going to be looking at Devontae Smith, who only has 91 speed, a better matchup for James Bradbury. He probably is not going to fare so well against AJ Brown, so we want Darius Slay on him, and he's really not going to fare all too well on a guy like Quez Watkins, who has seven speed better. Okay, so going to our slot cornerback depth chart we're taking a look at it and we see that Avante Maddox is in here that's not necessarily what we want so let's go with Bradbury we want Bradbury the slower guy to match up in practice against the slower guy on the offense and we'll take a look at this as Kansas City's offense as well so we can get a picture of that but what that does so that you know is that overrides this depth chart so anytime you only have two corners on the field James Bradbury and Darius Slay will be those two corners out there However, whenever it comes to having a slot corner, he will then move into the slot and your number one and number two will be Darius Slay and Avante Maddox. So let's then take a look at the Kansas City Chiefs and how they arrange their lineup. Kadarius Tony is 5'11", Juju is 6'1", Mikko Hardman is 5'10", and Marquez Valdez-Scantling is 6'4". So let's take a look at their slot wide receiver and see what we have to worry about in the slot. In the slot, we're talking about Marquez Valdez-Scantling at 6'4", 95 speed. That's a tough matchup because it's going to be very hard to find anybody on our team that has that height and speed combination. However, what I do see here is that we have two good matchups with Kadarius Tony and Juju Smith-Schuster. Kadarius Tony is only 5'11 at 93 speed. Technically speaking, we're going to have a better matchup at cornerback, and Juju Smith-Schuster is 6'1 at only 87 speed. I feel that we can get good matchups with Bradbury and Slay on these guys all day long. And that's also going to free us up to have Avante Maddox, our speedy corner that is only five foot nine, match up against Miko Hardman. To be honest with you, our matchups here are pretty clear cut. We would want to make sure that Darius Slay is covering Kadarius Tony because Darius Slay is quicker and he's about the same height at six foot. We would want to make sure that Bradbury is covering Juju Smith-Schuster because of the similar speeds. Juju's a little bit slower, Bradbury is a little bit slower, and they're both six foot one and like I said Avante Maddox is five foot nine and has a little bit better speed so those matchups are pretty good for us and so we would want to go to their slot wide receiver like I said we know now that that is Marquez Valdez Scantling and we have to consider matching that guy up this is a situation where it would become extremely helpful to have some of the prototypical safeties that you're seeing entering the NFL in recent years a guy like Jeremy Chin Isaiah Simmons could be extremely helpful, even Justin Reed, in that slot cornerback position. These are players that are not afraid to get their hands dirty. They'll come down into the box, they'll make a tackle, they'll make a play, and they'll also cover somebody. That's what the slot cornerback position is often about. These are players that you might send after the quarterback. So players like Jeremy Chin, Isaiah Simmons, like I talked about, have the size and the athleticism to do that. We see Jeremy Chin at six foot three, 221 pounds, 93 speed. Isaiah Simmons at six foot four, 93 speed. These guys would be perfect options for creating that mismatch. I would take these guys in a matchup, even though their man coverage is low, their zone coverage isn't great. I would take these guys in a matchup over a lot of my other cornerbacks against a guy like Marquez Valdez Scantling, who we said was pretty tall and pretty athletic. So I just want to emphasize that finding the best matchups and gaining advantages at the cornerback position is all about the player's athleticism, the player's size, and their coverage capabilities. We did focus a lot on size and athleticism in today's video because I believe that those are the most important factors, but certainly don't downplay their capabilities in coverage or their abilities that they might have as a superstar or X-Factor player. Don't forget that you will often have the capability to change the abilities on these players, and that's another way to gain advantages. With a guy like Darius Slay, depending on the game, I may want to change what I'm doing with him. Right now, he has inside shade. Well, if 
if I'm using him on the outside, that's not particularly helpful. So I'll want to change it to one step ahead or outside shape. Maybe I want to change it to bench press because I plan to press my corners a lot. Either way, there are ways to gain advantages with using the correct superstar abilities as well. The one thing that I did mention there, consider using your safeties in the slot or at cornerback, depending on when the situation arises. Hopefully you found this information useful. If you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Consider visiting the links down in the description below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video, and I hope you have a good one.